What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment, and once again, share this one because it's a good one. Today, I got a brother on that did a bunch of time in federal prison, but I'm going to let him introduce himself, tell you who he is, where he's from, and talk a little bit about how he ended up in prison. Ant, the mic's yours, homie. Yeah, my name is Ed Live. I'm from the Bronx, New York. I, um, I caught my case in Bronx, New York, drugs and um, conspiracy to murder. I got a 20 year sentence. I just came home less than 60 days ago. That's about it. So you ended up catching a drug case with a with what a conspiracy to commit murder? Yeah, yeah. They, um, they, they had first they had me for a 924J which was aiding and abetting the firearm while protecting the drugs, but somebody got killed. Was it a robbery or was it just someone just protecting the spot? No, just protecting the drug spot. What's the first prison you ended up going to? From from MDC Brooklyn with Beaumont. USP Beaumont. What year was that? This was at 08. 08. Beaumont was jumping back then. That's just when, right when they was getting ready to close it, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why I only stayed there. I only stayed there for like two months. And I went to um, FCI Beckley. How old were you when you walked into Beaumont? Shit. I walked into Beaumont. I had to be 29. 29 years old, walking into Beaumont with a 20-year sentence. What was going through your mind? Were you like, damn, man, they're sending me to Beaumont, man. I'm from New York. I'm going to Texas. I'm sure you had heard the stories, right? Yeah. I, it, it wasn't even, it, it was like, because when I was in Brooklyn, it was, everybody, we all was going to the CO to see what we was designated to. Everybody was going to Otisville, Raybrook. Everything close to New York. I went there, like, yeah, USB Beaumont. What the fuck is that? He said, Texas. I said, God damn. When, when you ended up going to Texas, were you thinking in your mind, like, that they did this shit just to be nasty? Like, the government sent you all the way to Texas? Yeah, that's what I thought. Definitely, I thought that. You know, I think sometimes they do that. When you got a big case and the prosecutor don't like you, I think they do nasty shit. Like, with me, they sent me to Big Sandy. Big Sandy was my first prison. I'm like, wow, man. I'm from New York. I'm thinking I'm going to Otisville, or if I'm going to the Penn, I might be going to Allenwood, Canaan, somewhere close to home. Yeah. And I ended up in yeah. Big Sandy. What, yeah. uh, what was it like when you got to Beaumont? It was a lockdown when I got there. As soon as it came off lockdown, the, um, the, the New York car got into the Dallas car. And, and from there, they, that's when they really closed it down. I got transferred to um, my. First of all, I had medium points and they sent me there, so I got transferred to FCI Beckman. I want to talk a little bit about that New York car, right? You said the New York car got into it with the South car. What was that about? I don't even know. I had just got there. You know, I just got there. I don't really know. The, the, I, this is this my first time going to jail, so I didn't really know the ins and outs. I was just there. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a hell of an introduction, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were they out there stabbing each other, hitting each other with rocks? What was going on? Yeah, all type of shit was going on. It, it, it went down in all the units. It wasn't outside. Like one unit started, juices went on, and it went to the next unit, to the next unit, to the next unit. That's how that shit worked. Were you in a position where you had to work? Were you down there working too? I mean, were they trying to yeah, hit you? Yeah, I had to. You know, you had to. You ain't got no choice. <laughs> so let me ask you this. You're from New York, right? You're in the yeah. South. So they get into it with the South car. So, I mean, there's probably a bunch of South dudes down there. Who won? Shit. I, I, in my unit, we was kind of outnumbered. It was probably like, we was outnumbered, but a lot of them were scared. They was running. So it was like, you know, it was probably like even in my unit. I don't know about the other unit. I was, remember, I just got there. So I don't really, you know what I'm saying? What was going through your mind? Were you like, damn, man, this shit's jumping off. You just came off of lockdown. You get to the jail. It's lockdown. You come off, and now you're out here fighting for your life, kind of, right? Yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of, it, it was, it was kind of. But I'm used to being on, on, on like, on, like right now, raises and shit. So it wasn't, it wasn't that type of shit going on. So it wasn't really nothing. But then, you know what I mean? Niggas was just fighting, locks and socks and shit. I'm used to having rape. but but once I once I started going to other jails, I started seeing different shit. But that was just like some quick shit right there. How long was it going on for? 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 minutes? Had to be about 
about at least about eight minutes in the middle. It was going on every unit, so the police didn't know what you had to go to. So once the police get control of the situation, do you end up going to the hole? Nah, I made it back to my, I made it back to myself. But I ended, that's what I'm saying, went on lockdown, but I, that's how I ended up going to the media. So some people, you know, that are watching the show, they don't know about prison, but when shit like that happens, they lock the jail down. Some people go to the hole. Sometimes they just come knock on your door like, yo, pack your shit. You're leaving, yeah. right? Yeah, sometimes they pull the whole bus up, take the whole car. They bust us, so everybody packed up. So when they tell you to pack up, are you kind of like, man, I'm glad I'm getting out of here. hope I'm going close to home. Every time I got packed up, I never went close to home. Only first time I went close to home was when I, when I left. When I went to Beaumont the second time after I left USD Farms. And when I left Beaumont the second time, that's when I finally went back. I went to Allenwood, Pennsylvania. I want to talk a little bit about this, right? Because you leave Beaumont, you go to an FCI from Beaumont, right? Mm-hmm. You're in, you're in an FCI, but then you end up back in a USP Florence, another dangerous place. What was that yeah. for? I left because I, I, I went to um, Beckley. They had a, they had a program there called the Brave Program. I was in the Brave Program, and the Brave Program is like people people young people coming in with long sentences. So I was in that joint. I finished the program. I ended up going upstairs, but the whole time it was like. It was like over there, it was like, it was a whole bunch of D.C. dudes, man. So the D.C. dudes was like out with them. If you had, it was New York dudes there. You had New York, New York Bloods. We all was there. But, but it was like we was outnumbered. So one day some shit happened at commissary. I was at Brett. One, one, of, the, one of the Bloods at commissary, he, um, he, he, he on commissary line. One of the D.C. dudes jumped in front of him. So... Long story short, they argue, so they tell each other, meet each other in the yard. So they ended up going to the yard by themselves. But remember, it's a whole bunch of DC dudes there, so they they go to the yard by themselves. They don't tell nobody. When they get to the yard, it's DC dudes out there, so they end up jumping the blood dudes. So after that, we go outside. We try to see. First, we get locked down that night, and SIS come get me because I'm like the, the leader of the whole. Everything is going on there. So you know, you know SIS, SIS, they, they come get me to talk to me. I'm like, yo, ain't nothing going on. They're like, you sure? They're like, you know we're going to come get you. So I said, no, nah, ain't nothing going on. So we go out the next morning, it's snowing. I remember walking the track. It's snowing real hard outside. We walk the track, talk to everybody. We, go, we get around the track. It's snowing so hard, you can't really see. We, as soon as we hit the corner, it's like a thousand DC. <laughs> So they come to me, they come straight, because all of them know me, they come straight to me, like, yo, yo, that shit there, that shit there, right? I'm like, yeah, it's there. No, they, no, they talk about, yeah, that shit there, Slim? That shit there? And I'm like, yeah, that shit there. So later on that day, I call, I call the homie, the outside, I'm like, that shit ain't there. I just said that because we was out there. Yeah. So we, we talking outside. <laughs> so I'm like, yo. We we got we have numbers so we got to go we got to get them we got to go in the unit and get them you know what I'm saying so long story short that night everybody's supposed to go to the unit and do what we're supposed to do my time it was it was about forty of us by the time that eight o'clock move came it was only about twelve of us I'm like man fuck this I ain't staying I ain't, I ain't gonna be walking around getting embarrassed and all y'all niggas, y'all niggas going for this shit, I'm out. So we all go to the unit, like 12 of us go to the unit. We do what we do. So we end up going to the shoe. So it was us in the shoe and about 15 DC dudes in the shoe. So we stay in the shoe for about six months. The whole time we in the shoe, the, people, the DC dudes, we ended up getting cool again. You know how you be in the shoe? Everybody in the shoe, we pass the books back and forth. We ended up getting cool again. So from there, they said that I started the whole shit, so you know the USP Florence is like a gang jail. So they said they said me the USP Florence said everybody else to act water. Let me let me ask I wanna ask you this though. So you said you were kinda of like the leader, like the shot caller over there. Do they allege that you're a blood gang member? Keep it one hundred. Yeah. Okay. So you probably know one of the you do you know any of the homies from double nine G's? Yellow boy, Y B? No, I don't know no no. Okay. No. So you, uh, we're going to get over there in a minute, right? But let me ask you this. They, you go out there, you're like, man, fuck this. I ain't staying here. We're about to handle this business, right? So yeah. 
You go in there and you tell me you do what you do, but you know, people watching the show don't know what happens. Are people getting stabbed? People just getting beat? I mean, tell me what's going on. We went in there and one one of the dudes, the shit was crazy. We went in there with knives, all type of shit. One, but we went in there, we we got surprised. It was supposed to be a sneak attack, but one of the dudes that was supposed to be with us, he went back in there and told the DC dudes we was coming. So we came in the unit. They had locks and socks and everything. That shit was crazy. <laughs> they was already prepared for us when we came in. I mean, you look like a pretty big dude, though. Were you handling your business, though? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So now, uh, yeah. so now you go to the shoe, you guys are talking, whatever. You end up getting transferred. Now you go to what? USP Florence. It's a gang prison, right? USP Florence. As soon as I get there, they put me in a cell with, um, I don't know, you familiar with the GDs? 100%. It's a, it's a dude named Crusher. They Crusher, he, he like ran all the GDs and all the jail. He, he, he was like Larry Hoover told the I, I would think I was in USP Lee with him, man. I think. I think he was in Lee County, Crusher. I know, I know, I know Harold was in Lee County. Well, anyway, they put me in a cell with him. As soon as I get in a cell with him, a DC dude comes, I put my stuff on the bed, DC dude comes to the cell, like, yo. Yo, I heard what happened, man. I should, I'm, as soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, man, I'm about to be out of here right now. <laughs> and he like, nah, that shit, damn, we're going to leave that shit to FCI. We in the pen. That shit ain't, that's some, that's some bullshit. I'm like, yeah, all right. So I get there. That joint, that's, that, that, that might have been the worst jail I, I was in. USP Florence. When you say the worst jail, what was going on over there? People was getting stabbed there, stabbed, killed every day. So, like every time you come, you go on lockdown for, for a month, come back out, somebody gets stabbed. You go on lockdown for a month, come back out, somebody gets killed. That shit was crazy. Every, every day is tension in there. Did you have to keep a knife on you every day in there? Yeah, you had to. You had to. As soon as you come in, as soon as you come in, your homie be your knife. Day see, number that, one. See that 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 one. See see when I went to when I first went to Beaumont, I didn't get the introduction like I did when I got to USB Florida. When I got to USB Florida, as soon as I went in and I sat my stuff down, the, the homies came. It was like, yo, here. They gave me like a big ass piece, you know, like the bunk bed. Yeah. Like they cut some shit off the the metal off the bunk bed. I'm like. I'm not supposed to hide this at this. Like, yo, better get caught with it than without it. I'm like, all right, fuck. I knew what it was from there. That's when shit gets real, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you're in Florence. Let me ask you this, though. Do the, in Florence, do the New York Bloods ride with the West Coast Bloods? How's that work? Nah, all New York ride together over there. So, the New York car was just the blood. If you're from New York and you're a blood, you're still in the New York car. All the homies are together. Yeah, everybody, you know, we so far away from home, everybody got to ride together. What about, was there any West Coast Bloods over there? Yeah, I, I know a couple of them. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was the West Coast Bloods rode with the West Coast Cl Crips. Did you think that was kind of like bugged out? It, it, I mean, I've been, I've been heard about it. I've been heard how they do it. That's how they do on the street, though. Because like, they got that little, they, 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 they ain't warring no more like they were back in the day. Did you, in all the prisons that you were in, did you ever kick it with any of the West Coast Bloods? I mean, did they respect yeah, you guys? Yeah, yeah, I, got a, I, I, talk, I, I still got a lot of, lot of, lot of friends from the West Coast like that I talk to. You know, because sometimes there's, a, you know, people are always wondering, like, man, do the West Coast Bloods get along with the East Coast Bloods? I've been in, you know, I was in USP Lee when the New York and Jersey Bloods got into it with the Baltimore Bloods, and, and it, it got brutal. That's why I'm asking you that. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, it never got like that. Something happened with one of the West Coast Bloods when I got to Beaumont. Again, I guess we'll get into that once we get back to when I went back to Beaumont. Yeah. So, how long did you stay in Florence? From so probably like 2010 to probably 2012 or something like that. And you end up going back to Beaumont. Why'd you leave Florence? No, from, from 09. I stayed in, I stayed in um, FCI Beckley for like I did the program. I probably stayed there for like 13 or 14 months. Yeah, probably like 09. The end of the 09, I went to Florida. So why you end up leaving Florence? What happens? Oh, they closed it down. They closed it down and turned it into a school program. And now they, they pack you up. Do you find out you're going back to Beaumont or is it just a surprise? They sent, they sent, they sent, the whole, they sent everybody back to Beaumont except for the um, Mexican mafia because of the prizes there. 
So everybody that could go back to Beaumont went, 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 went to, everybody that go to Beaumont went, went to Beaumont. Except for the Mexican Mafia, they went to Big Sandy because they couldn't be around the Pisces. So I, I remember when all the Pisces went to uh, Big Sandy. I was over there when that happened. So they put you on a bus back to Beaumont. Are you thinking in your mind, like, man, are you kidding me? Back to Texas? Yeah, I should. And they drove us from, from Colorado to Texas with black boxes on. How long was that ride, man? They drove us from. They came and got us, but what's the name? Was What's the name? They came and got me and Boy George. No, you, I know you're familiar with Boy George, right? Huh? If I tell you this, bro, you probably wouldn't believe it, man. One of the lawyers on the Boy George case, he just got denied his compassionate release. But one of the lawyers on that case reached out to me for kind of like some consultation and, and to help out a little bit. So, yeah, I know exactly who Boy George is. I should have gave you that picture. I got you. Me and him, was in, that was my, we was in the same unit of love. I'm going to send you that picture, too. No doubt. That might be the case. But, um, yeah, we was, um, me and him, they came and got us party, party like, um, I remember it was a Sunday, Sunday. We was looking at football. It was a Sunday morning. They came. They, they, they said they called my name. They called his name. They put me and him in the shoe. So then later on that night, they came and got us. They put us on the bus. This is a crazy story right here. We get on the bus, right? We got the black boxes on. They drive us from from USP Florence to Oklahoma City. So we get to Oklahoma City. They call Boy George up the bus first. So they call him off the bus. He's sitting there waiting. They take it long. So he never come back. So they, they now they let everybody off the bus. So as soon as we get in there, you know the little um little chair you sit on? The, the chair you sit on? He done sat on the chair. That nigga had a knife and it had a knife in his ass that he was hiding. <laughs> so big. And yeah, that shit was all the way up. Like you guys see the X ray thing? You see all this stuff. It was like, yeah, he's going to the shoe. He said, "We're going to go to the show." I was like, "Damn!" Yeah. You know, he got a lot of he got a lot of little 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 partners. I don't even want to get into that, but you know. But anyway, we we go to Oklahoma. After Oklahoma, we motherfucking we go to um we stay there for about an hour, and then the um COs from from Beaumont come get us. We ride all the way from Oklahoma to Beaumont, Texas, and I'm back in Beaumont, Texas. What was that ride like? How long was that ride? And right, we left. Uh, we left. We left. Um, we left Sunday. A uh, Sunday night. We got to. We got to Beaumont like Monday. Monday night, like Monday dawn and a Tuesday, like one o'clock in the morning. I, I, hey, I know what it's like. I drove from Oklahoma, man. It was probably like a twelve-hour ride, man, from Oklahoma to Pollock, USP Pollock. Worst ride I ever had, man. That that and the ride from um, Lee County to Big Sandy, man. Too. It, it's just. People need to understand, man, that ride ain't no joke, right? That's when you got that black box on. Vicious. So you get back to Beaumont, man. Talk about it, man. What's going on in Beaumont when you get there? Oh, Beaumont. Beaumont. Now, when you get back to Beaumont, you know they just turned it back into a Pentagon when we get there. So we get there. That shit. You got people. Now you got people that we don't. Now you got people coming in and we don't check in in Florida. And probably thankfully shit, you know what I'm saying? You running into people you check this, you gotta check them in again. That's it, because they got people they had people coming from every pen. Polak, Big Sandy, Atwater, Victorville. So they got all different niggas mixing in, people that you know beef with and everything. So that shit, every every time the bus comes, some shit was happening. But they was they wasn't locked <clears throat> excuse me, they wasn't locking down at first. But too much shit started happening, and they started locking down. So people are coming on the bus, man. People are watching the show. They don't really know what checking in is. Can you tell us what it is? Oh, you, when you get to the when you when, when you get somewhere and, and, and get either your car or another car say you can't be it, you gotta go to the home and, and wait for them to send you somewhere else, which might take about six to eight months sometimes. Cause you gotta cause when somebody check in, they gotta they gotta go in and say, I can't be here no more. You ever have people bucket when you're like, yo, homie, you, you ain't gonna be here, you gotta go. Oh man, that's the worst. <laughs> now I had I remember I don't want to say the dude's name. I remember one dude though, he came, he done got checked into every spot. So you remember the email, somebody emailed me and was like, Yeah, such and such coming, he coming from um Allenwood Pit. So every bus I'm waiting for this nigga to come, I'm waiting, he finally come. So this day I'm not he, he, I'm thinking that he checked things, it took so long to come. So I'm in the kitchen, I'm sitting at the table at breakfast time, he come in there, everybody introduced him to me, you know, this I'm like, oh, 
I'm like, yo, you can't be here, man. It's the funniest shit ever. He like, please, man, please. Let me just stay two days, man. I done got checked in like six jails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, I got to follow this protocol, man. You can't be here, man. Was it one of the homies, one of the dudes from New York? He was one of the homies, man, and, and I was cool with him, too. So, you know, when you're cool with somebody, you got to do that. That's another thing about jail. You can't you can't have no feelings of that shit because it could be a dude. It could be a dude that's rifling around your way. You got If he got to go, he got to go. You know what I'm saying? If he do something crazy, he got to go. Like, you know, you know we, we ain't trying to tolerate no no snitching, no, no homo, no homosexual activity. None of that shit. So, you know, once somebody do that, it don't matter where they from. We just hand them on the street after that. I don't care if you from if you from if you from around my way, living my building or whatever. I can't, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Prison politics, man, that's the life that you live when you're inside of there, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta do it. Cause you can't that you can't take up somebody say say somebody messing with a homo. You can't take up for them like, oh no, nah, leave them alone. You're gonna look crazy. So you got I know I'm not doing that. I can't do that. I want to talk to you a little bit about Boy George. How was he in prison, man? What type of dude was he? Oh, he a good dude. He a good dude. He quiet, played chess all day. That's about it. He's known to get busy, though. I know he's got some stuff because, yeah. you know, I went through all his yeah. paperwork. But definitely a dangerous dude, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely a dangerous dude. And he go, he, man, what was he thinking, man? He had, a, had that knife in his ass, and he's, he's transferring with a knife. He's got to know he's going to have to sit on the chair, man. Yeah, he, I, you know, some people, you know the model, better to get caught with it than without it. I hear you, man, but on the transfer, I'd have been like, man, listen. <laughs> uh, some people, you know, he, he, he got a lot of, he, 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 he gets a lot of shit, so you don't know when that shit going to happen. So you got to, I done seen shit happen on the bus and everything, so you got to be on point. You don't know when shit going to happen. No doubt. I seen a white dude pull that chain off on the bus and start hitting this other dude when I was leaving. Um, I think it was USP Lee. We were leaving USP Lee and dude got that chain off and just started hitting this dude. Man, I was like, wow. <laughs> you see some crazy shit in there, right? Yeah. I, I was saying, like when they took the, um, they, they was taking the Washington Dryer, man, from Beaumont. So they was like, um, they was like, yo, we, we taking the Washington Dryer, so you know, the dudes work, that works at facilities got to come take them. So all the cars had a meeting on the yard. Like, yo, nobody nobody from these cars take these washing machines out these dudes. So two days later, you see you see two white dudes from Texas with the facility through. They go up, take the um, take take the washing and dry. So niggas like, damn. So niggas have a meeting. Like, I thought we said nobody. So, you know, the white dudes, they're like, yo, we going to handle it. Long story short, I was about to leave. I was about to go to Allenwood. So I packed my stuff up. And next thing you know, the juice just go up. Motherfucking white dude slaughtered them two white dudes, man. That shit was crazy. I don't know what happened to them. I know, I know, I know, I know they was outside. I know there was so many police and shit outside. I know they caught, it was breakfast time. You know them white dudes don't play it. like I I I get them I get the white dudes props like in the pit. They don't they, they when they say they gonna do something they do it they ain't playing. Even though a lot of them don't be racist and shit, but they 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 do what they do. You gotta get on their props. I you know I talked about that on a video. I said man that the white dudes are probably the most vicious against their own like yeah. stab you in a minute, not care man, and just straight butcher you right. That, that's why. That's why. That's why. When, when when you make a deal with the white dudes of the pen, you gotta go. You gotta do it right. Cause if, if they say they gonna do something to their people, they gonna do it. So that's why when they come to you and be like, yo, your, your people violate, you gotta make sure you. Cause you know what I'm saying? Cause they, cause they gonna do it for you. <laughs> if one of their people violates you, they gonna handle it. You gotta handle it too. I bet you them two dudes wish they never worked in facilities, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. What does it matter with people, man? Why do they do shit like that? Where they think like, man, I work here. I'm going to do my job. Did they not yeah. realize that this was going to happen? Yeah, that was, yeah, I didn't understand that. That was crazy. What's one of the most craziest things you've seen in there, Ant? They're flawless with the Indians. You know how, you know how they got the, um, they got the, you know how the showers is in the pen. They got the gate. You got to put the, put the you got to put your um, sheet over the showers. Nobody can't see in there. 
you sitting there looking at football, you know the shadows be right in front of the TV. I don't know how it was. You was up in Florida, they right in front of the TV. You sitting there looking at football. You see two Indians, they call them lunch. You see two Indians running the unit. They went to the dude's cell. Somebody must have said, oh, here in the shower. The niggas went in the shower, pulled the other Indian dude out, stabbed, his, stabbed him in his face party like at least like 20 times. This whole iPhone was <clears> hanging <throat> out, yo. That shit was crazy. That might have been the, 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 the um, roughest shit I've seen. Like that, his eyeball was literally hanging out of his face. That shit was crazy. And he was uncalled. I don't even know what happened to him. I know he was unconscious. His eyeball, that shit was crazy. Oh, he stabbed the both of his eyes. Man, can you imagine getting stabbed in the eyes, bro? Yeah. That shit. Was the dude screaming? Did you hear him screaming? Yeah, he was screaming. Uh, yeah, he was screaming. Hey. When you hear someone screaming, they're getting stabbed. Is that like, it's like a, I mean, I've heard it. I've experienced it, right? It's like a horror movie, right? Yeah. You know, I got, I, I, I got so immune to that shit. That shit didn't even stop, stop even bothering me. You know, that was one of the things I was going to ask you. You, you. How long did it take before you were kind of like, man, so what, man? Shit, I was really like that when I first came in because I, I had it in my mind. You know what I'm saying? I bought a few times and it is what it is. And once I, I probably like when I got to Florence, I probably was like, man, it is fucking. I don't even care no more. Whatever happened, I just was trying. I just was making sure I protect myself to get back to my family. I was like, whatever happened to anybody else, I don't even care. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to me. Did you ever think in your mind like, man, I might not make it out of this motherfucker. I might have to kill someone, or someone might kill me. It crossed my mind a couple of times, but then once once I finally left Beaumont, which, like when I was in the pen, it was like it was like whatever, what it is, what it is. You know what I'm saying? I was so far, I was I was kind of stressed because I was still had a whole bunch of time left. But then once I got to Allenwood, that's when everything started started coming together. You know what I mean? Did you go to Allenwood FCI or the pen? At the FCI. How was that? Was it laid back? Yeah, it was laid back. I fucked the whole shit up though. It was laid back. I, I stayed at Allenwood party like the end of the end of two like the end, like two thousand fourteen to to sixteen. So two thousand fourteen to sixteen. How'd you fuck that up? Fuck around. Get get. I had a dude was getting these motherfucking suboxes in there, and 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 I got caught up in all that shit. Ended up going to Hazleton. Back to the pen. Nah, they sent me to the media because they, they didn't give me no shot. I didn't get no shot. They just kicked me out and sent me to the media. Was O'Brien the warden when you went to Hazleton? I don't even know, you know, to tell you the truth. I don't even, that's one thing. I don't pay attention to who the warden is. The only people I be knowing who is SIS and certain dickhead COs. I never really talked to the warden. Like, you know how people be talking to the warden, right? I never did know that shit while I was out there. I mean, you had a leadership position, I'm sure. Did they ever try to talk to you? Like, yo, man, your people and... Only people that always talk to me is the SIS. That's how you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let me ask you about that. You ever have the SIS tell you, hey, man, you got to tell your dudes to be easy? Yeah, all the time. All the time. Was it, was it kind of like where, you know, when I first went into the system, you know, the cars and wherever you're from, we policed ourselves. Like, if someone yeah. got out of line... The cops, the administration were like, yo, go ahead, do what you got to do. Smash them, stab them. We don't care. You guys police them. Yeah, that's how it was in Florence. It was like, they said, don't stab them. Beat them up. And that's what they tell us, don't stab them. But the funny story is, when I got to, when I left from Allenwood and went to Hazleton, the captain put me in the shoe overnight for captain review. Because all the, there was a whole bunch of D.C. dudes that was in Beckley that ended up going to Hazleton. He's like, you sure you want to go out there? I'm like, yeah, I'm going out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm going out there. So I get out. See, I, see, I, I can admit this. I get out, I leave out the shoe. I got the bus shoes on. As soon as I leave out, I see a DC dude that was there. He's looking at me. I ain't say nothing to him. Then I see it. I get to the corner of the laundry. I'm mad as hell. I got these dumb ass bus shoes on. It's, it's, it's raining. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to be out here fighting. I got these dumb ass. Stupid ass karate shoes. <laughs> so I see my man, my man Pee Wee, my man Pee Wee from DC. He see me, so so he was like one of the, one of the head dudes at Beckley. So he see me, he walking towards me. I'm like, I'm like, oh man. 
So I'm getting ready, you know what I'm saying? But when he walk up, he's like, oh, shit, gave me a piss. It was a whole different thing. He's like, that shit dead. Don't worry, that shit dead. Don't worry about that shit. I'm like, oh, all right. So sometimes, man, people are looking for a way out in prison, and sometimes it's all right to give them a way out, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially when you got them Jackie Chan bus shoes on. Yeah, yeah. I, right there, I, I, I would have been finished right there. I was by myself, it was braided, I had, I had karate shoes on. My shit was fun. just came out the shoe. I had no energy, I was starving. <laughs> So listen, I want to talk to you about what you got going on. I know you got what? What do you got? A movie coming out? A documentary? You got, got something coming out? I got a documentary coming out. I got an entertainment company. I got I, I got a lot, couple of things happening right now. That, that should be going. I got the documentary called The Chronicles of Ed Love. It's just about a whole bunch of stuff about my life, my family, and shit. Can you tell us a little more about it? I want the people to tune in and, and get that and see that. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna really be about my life, about I'm gonna talk about how it felt to be to be gone for my kids for so long. You know what I'm saying? How I feel like come home and have a granddaughter and shit like that. It's just a, it's just you know what I mean? I hear you I hear my, you. My grand my granddaughter took my daughter's spot. You know what I'm saying? Because when I left my daughter was little, so then I came home, I got it. you know what I'm saying? How old was your daughter when you left? Shit, my daughter probably was seven. And then you come home and she's how old? So I came home, she had to be, I think, 23 or 24. It's a long time, man. It's a hell of a difference to leave this little girl and come home and now she's a woman and a mother yeah, herself. Yeah. The good thing is my mom, my mom, her mom, they, they made sure I kept in touch with, 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 with her, her <clears> and my son the whole time I, I was locked up. That was a good thing. That's what's they up. So they visited and everything. So I stayed in their life the whole time I was locked up. Let me let me ask you this, Aunt. You know we're gonna get ready to go because I know you got a meeting at ten o'clock. You uh, you grew up in the streets, man. Obviously, right? I mean, you got it in the streets. You got your money in the streets. You ended up in prison, but now you're home. You're free. What message would you give to other young kids, man, in the BX, man, in the Bronx, or anywhere in the world, man, that are on the wrong path? Oh, shit ain't worth it. They gonna take a big chunk. If they don't take your whole life, they gonna take a big chunk of your life. You gonna know, be? It ain't worth. It. You need to put them guns down. That shit does not work. It's not work. Guns, drugs, whatever you're doing, put that shit down. These people don't care about how old you are. I was lucky to come home, and my mom was still alive. A lot of, a lot of dudes being jail, they lose their mom. They do. My man, my man's son got killed while he was in jail. You don't want, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to lose people. That's the worst thing. I lost my grandma in jail. That was like the worst, the worst part of my bed when I lost my grandma. I can only imagine what it would have been like to lose my mother, man. That was my number one fear. So Yeah, me too. That time my grandma's at the then you know, my grandma's I lost my grandma's, I was like, yeah, this shit real. I please don't let me lose my mom. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. That's why, man, today, man, you're free. You gotta stay free. You gotta be the best man you could be, the best father, the best husband, the best son. And and, and man, appreciate that freedom, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to close the show, Ant. Just let you know, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. And I'm sure plenty of people know who you are, man. One of the big homies, man. People respect you. And you know what, man? I just appreciate you coming on, man. It's not always easy to get guys like you to come on my show. So thank you. <laughs> Good looking, man. I appreciate it, man. No doubt. When that documentary hits, man, let me know, man. We're going to pump it out for you and let people know that it's out, all right? I got you. I got you. Good luck. All right, man. With respect, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share the video. Until tomorrow, we're out.